Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mexi Geek Show. Today is Friday, February 17th, and this is episode number 49. Last week was a packed week thanks to the Nintendo Direct, and as is always the case, after events like that, things tend to slow down. This week was fairly quiet, though we did get a number of reviews up on the site for some new release titles, some hardware, and the new Ant-Man movie. Now, sadly, we must begin this week by talking about the release date change of Dead Island 2. That is that the fact that the release date has actually come forward. Um, so last week, uh, sorry, last week, during the week, uh, developer Dan Buster Studios and publisher Deep Silver uh, confirmed that development of Dead Island 2 has gone gold. It is now complete, uh, which means it's ready for printing onto disc. And with that, they realized that uh, because development has gone ahead smoother than expected, the game is bringing its release date forward an entire week. So previously, the release date was set for April 28th. It is now April 21st. Uh, they haven't really released any other information, just apart from the fact that, you know, the game has gone gold in its development and it is now releasing a week earlier. Um, but it is nice to see that that is happening. What makes it even more special is the fact that, you know, they were a little aware of the fact that, you know, Dead Island 2 has been many, 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 many years in development across its various versions and developers. Um, and when they announced the delay, uh, you know, uh, late last year, slipping the game from its planned February release to April, um, you know, it didn't go down well with a lot of people. So they knew coming into this one uh, that, you know, revealing that the date had changed again uh, would set people off. But the fact, you know, they're bringing it forward, that's a very nice thing that they've done. Obviously, it's not uh, necessarily... Uh, you know, the big thing for everyone. It's not as if we uh, we need to have, you know, every game move forward, but it is nice to see that that is uh, happening for this particular one. Something else that we actually got uh, a look at during the week was a new trailer for the, the uh, re relaxation reclamation title, Terra Nil. So Terra Nil is a game that's been in development for a while. Um, they did put out a demo uh back in 2021 late 2021 for during a steam next fest um and the whole purpose of the game is to use um uh you know technology to revitalize wastelands um so what i'll do is i'll just throw the uh, the trailer up here while i talk so you can get a sense of what's going on so the we the with uh, this game is you know in order to have equipment like you see they're putting down you know something to to um, you know till the soil uh, you need power. Power can be done by uh, wind generation, uh, but you can't just plant a windmill or a wind turbine, uh, sorry, in, in solid in uh, dirt. It has to go on rock. Um, so the wetlands here that we're seeing, this is the one that's been in the demo. They've shown this off a few times. Um, but this trailer was also big because we actually finally got to see new information about some of the other areas. So as you saw there, um, it's not just a matter of you know, you pop down a whole bunch of stuff, make everything green, and you're good to go. Once you've placed everything down, you then have to reclaim all the technology you've used. So you can throw things down wherever you want, but your little re uh, recovery vehicle can only go on water. Um, so here we're seeing a lot more uh, of, you know, uh, the coastal things. So we're seeing, you know, sand and, and things like that, which is new. So this is a very tropical climate. Uh, later on in the trailer, there's a sort of city, like a ruined city with a lot of buildings that have been, uh, you know, pulled down and everything. So and there's a lot of stuff to sort of look at uh, in that scenario. It is interesting that uh, the game still does not have a release date. Um, they are saying, you know, sometime soon. Uh, we'll see the trailer transition to the, uh, the, the city in a moment. Um, yeah, so the, the, there's no set release date for it yet. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of curious to see how long it's going to be. Um, you know, I played as the, the build a while ago now and I really enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Um, what is interesting is that this is one of the developer games going to Netflix. So the game will be out on PC and, you know, be on Steam and all the other platforms that you can buy, you can enjoy. But then if you have a Netflix subscription and a compatible mobile device, uh, this will be one of the Netflix mobile games you'll be able to play. Um, now, we haven't seen any of the mobile version in, you know, in action, so we don't know, you know, do you have to hold the game in, in, in portrait mode and landscape mode or is it in portrait mode? Um, so there's nothing like that. Um, 
so you know we, we just have to sort of wait and see about what they're going to be doing for that uh, but it is part of that subscription so it is something just nice to see uh, if it's there now the trailer itself goes for you know some four minutes it's a fairly lengthy trailer um, but yeah the game's basically you know you go to set locations um, which are generated randomly every time you you start and you know go to a new location so it's not the same one every time uh, and the goal is to bring life back to them um, there's no timers there's no enemies to fight it's all about resource management on your side one of the big things is that as you create more more green spaces or you start to revitalize the world um, you have more resources to use to build the next thing um, so if you're doing that successfully you've got more resources to build more things uh, and if you you know play things down where you don't generate enough resources back for the cost of it um, you know you can start to run out so there's a bit of a uh, not a battle per se of you know picking and choosing what to do but you have to sort of think about it. you can't just rush in rush in all willy-nilly like so um you know even in the demo i did some 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 decisions like that and you know it ended up me failing because you know i couldn't do anything else moving away from uh calm and relaxing to chaotic and wrestling the full roster for wwe 2k23 was revealed during the week and when I say the full roster, I mean the full roster. Um, now, this is uh, the full list. You know, AJ Styles, Akira Tozawa, uh, Batista, Booker T. It goes through everyone, right? So there's Drew McIntyre. That's what he looks like in the game. Um, we have, uh, you know, John Cena. He's the cover athlete for the game uh, on all three versions of it. Um, we get down here. We've got Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then we've just got a, a photo of Zoe Stark. They, in, in amongst all the screenshots, they just had a photo of Zoe Stark. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if you, you know, have a particular favorite wrestler from over the past, you know, 20 years or so, there's a fair chance they might be in this list. Um, I couldn't tell you, apart from like the really well-known ones, I couldn't tell you who anyone is, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, we also got confirmation today on the game soundtrack, um, because we know that the, the 2K Sports series like to put a bit of effort in on the soundtrack for, for the games. Um, the game itself is of course releasing on the 17th of March if you do get one of the special digital editions or I think there's a retail version of it um, that will provide access on the 14th so you get a few extra days to get into it um, but it's not necessarily something you need to worry about uh, you know if you're just going to, to enjoy the game for its basic functions basic you know you're not too keen on being the first in the world to do everything I should say um, but yeah so as I said we did get the, the soundtrack today the full list is there um, the list will be in the show notes on, on YouTube when it's up there if you want to check it out um, there's some 140 ish wrestlers in the list so it is a fairly big one so as I said, there's a fair chance you'll find somebody uh, that you're very keen in uh, seeing there uh, also moving away from you know the, the the fake world we're going into faker world with a bit of information on PlayStation VR 2 so with the PlayStation VR 2 set to launch next week, which we'll get into that in a moment, um, PlayStation have released two teardown videos for the hardware. So teardown videos are literally where somebody will pull apart the device. So in an example of uh, the PlayStation VR 2 headset, they, you know, take the, the band off and all that sort of stuff, take the, the outer casing off. Now, it is very important to note that if you do tear down your device, you break your agreement with the owner, of, of the products in this case PlayStation uh, and then therefore it's not covered by warranty uh, if you do have any issues contact the manufacturer and they will be able to assist you um, the teardown video of the PlayStation VR and the controller uh, they both don't unfortunately have default English subtitles because obviously the manufacturing is all done in Japan um, but you can turn on the auto uh, translate in YouTube and it does a, a fair a fair job of, of doing so um, I'll just jump in here to the video that's a little too far in um so you can see here he's, he's literally he's got all the outer covering off that's the dial for adjusting the spacing of the lenses so if your eyes are a little wider or a little closer together this is what you would do so you line up that the the lenses of the playstation vr2 headset to the sweet spot which means that when you're using it you're getting the cleanest visual uh, cleanest visual image possible um, if they're off center a little bit that's where you can get sort of a blurry uh, effect because you're you're looking sort of at the side of the lens rather than the front of the lens 
Um, now again, do not pull apart your PlayStation VR 2 if you are, you know, interested in maintaining its warranty with the with the company. Um, it is one of those things where if you pull it apart for any reason, uh, you void the warranty. If the hardware is 20 years old, go ahead and pull it apart. Nobody's going to care too much. Um, but you know, if you do pull it apart, Sony are not required to service it in any way, shape, or form. They still may, but they're not required to, right? Because you've broken that seal, you've voided the, the warranty on it. Um, you can see that yellow uh, support stand, if you will. Uh, that is a custom design thing designed to hold the PlayStation VR 2 unit once it's removed from its outer casing. Um, those are exclusively you know, going to be used by Sony technicians for repairs uh, of the units if somebody does have a problem. Uh, so, you know, you can't just go out and buy one of those on, uh, you know, eBay or anything like that. Uh, they also have the uh, the sense controller breakdown. The the headset controller breakdown or teardown is about 15 minutes. The controller is about five minutes. So it's a fairly shorter video. Uh, obviously, last week they also did the unboxing, you know, showing everything you get in the box with the PSVR 2. Um, what is very, very cool about this sort of stuff isn't the fact that, you know, they're pulling it apart is... Uh, they're explaining what things are so you know you sort of get an idea of how the headset works um, obviously they're not going into the super technical information on it uh, talking about like the resistance of you know certain you know capacitors and pathways in the headset none of that is in there but it's still giving you an idea about you know this is this piece of technology does this and that's what we use it for and you know in the controller uh, you know there are sensors that detect when your hand is near you know ramping around it instead of you know having to wait for you to be touching it stuff like that so there's a lot of sort of just talk about that sort of thing, um, which if you're in into technology in any way, shape or form, is a fairly cool thing, uh, you know, to sort of go through and just learn about. Because it does give you an indication of how, you know, these things are, and some of them are quite small. Some of these things are very, very small. So um, as I said, it's just a cool thing to sort of pay attention to if you're interested. Um, speaking of the PlayStation VR 2 though, I do want to point out, uh, we do have a wrap up list here. Uh, for everyone who has um, any interest in picking up the hardware over the first sort of month or so post release um, now this lineup you know these are all the games that have been said to be releasing within the first sort of four to six weeks of the hardware launching on the 22nd some of these games will be on the day of the 22nd so Altair Breaker is marked as a launch window title so it could be the 23rd of February it could be the 24th of February we just know it won't be the 22nd um, Cities VR Enhanced Edition we know will be on the 22nd. So some of these things are you know, uh, definitely going to be launching on day one. Uh, Cosmonus High is obviously going to be there. Creed Rise to Glory, the boxing game, is going to be launching in the window. Uh, Demio is launching as a, as a day one title. Uh, and obviously like Gran Turismo 7 is getting its, its VR mode on uh, launch day. Horizon Call of the Wild will be launching on launch day. It's, you know, there's a bundle with it. Um, so, you know, it's definitely something to consider. Uh, one thing with Horizon, uh, Call of the Wild, oh, sorry, Call of the Mountain, Call of the Wild. Uh, if you do pick a, the game up, it does um, come in a bundle. So I believe it's an extra $90 or so to buy the, um, the, the game bundle over just the regular hardware. I say that and I, I should know because I do actually have a, a bargain guide for it. Um, let me bring up the pricing. Uh, so yeah, so the recommended retail price of the standard bundle is $879.95. We'll just say $880. Um, and it's $960 to buy the Horizon bundle. Um, so you're getting everything the same, except you're just getting a code for Horizon for an extra $80. To buy that game on its own is $110. So if you do want Horizon and you're getting the standard bundle, um, you know, you can pay an extra $80, get the game for $30 off. So you can save a bit of money there. Um, the other thing to note too is that the controllers are rechargeable unlike things like the oculus quest which require batteries um, these are you know rechargeable you plug a cord in the bottom and off they go they are selling a, an adapter stand for 80 dollars that lets you just drop them in much like you know wireless phone charging you know uh, situations um, you can just drop them in and off you go you can charge it that way as well uh, obviously that is an optional extra you don't need to worry about picking that up for yourself but it is something to be aware of uh, sticking within the world of PlayStation, the February lineup for the PlayStation Plus tiers has been revealed. Uh, and this is a fairly big lineup. Uh, normally, we, you know, we get sort of a big game from a third party. 
um, you know, we might get something here or there from Sony, but you know, it's an older title. Uh, but Horizon Forbidden West is actually launching into the PlayStation Plus game catalog on both tiers, you know, on the on the um, the premium and extra tiers. Uh, sorry, extra and deluxe tiers. I keep calling them the wrong titles because uh, we have it it's named differently here in Australia compared to some parts of the world. But yeah, so Horizon's going in there. Borderlands 3 is going in there. The Quarry, which launched just last year, is going into there as well. So these games generally roll out uh, around, uh, you know, sort of the 15th-ish of the month. They only announced these um, just the other day. Uh, they may be up by the time you see this. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, the PlayStation Plus Essentials titles, they're the free games, free in quotes there, the games that you get as part of, you know, your basic $80 a year membership. Um, those will be available on the first Tuesday of the month, unless the first Tuesday of the month is the first day of the month, in which case it's the second, um, which happened to be what happened this month. Um, but then the PlayStation Plus uh, Extra and Deluxe tiers come later in the month. So for the Extra, PlayStation Plus Extra, that's the middle tier. That's the one that gets you the game catalog, uh, the Ubisoft access, uh, and, you know, and all, all that uh, that you get with that. So Horizon Forbidden West for both PS4 and PS5, The Quarry for both PS4 and PS5, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard for PlayStation 4. Now this game does have a PlayStation VR mode, but no PlayStation VR software is supported on PlayStation VR 2 without them releasing a specific PlayStation VR 2 version of it. Um, Sony haven't said officially why, but it's more than likely due to the controllers being quite different. Um, you know, we have to wait and see if there's actually an official reason for that, but at the moment, that's what it is. Uh, Outriders, which is the sort of online three-player squad shooter from People Can Fly and Square Enix is coming to both PS1 and PS5. Scarlet Nexus is again coming to both. Borderlands coming to both. Tekken 7, uh, that only has a PS4 version, but it will be playable on PlayStation 5. Uh, Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown, again, PS4 only version, but it is coming to, it will be playable on PlayStation 5. Uh, Earth Defense Force, again, it's another one of the Bandai PS4 only titles, but playable on both. Uh, and then we get into the Square Enix RPG. So if you're an RPG fan, this is probably a big month because we have Onanaki, I Am Setsuna, and Lost Sphere. Um, these are the three games they launched on PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC uh, when they first all got dropped a couple over the past number of years. Um, they're all fantastic RPGs. Um, they are from a, the Square Enix group called Tokyo RPG Factory. Um, and the whole purpose was to create new gaming systems, new mechanics, new stories, new worlds, new everything that wasn't attached to Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest, that wasn't taking anything those games were doing. Um, this was, you know, to be completely new, and they've developed three games so far using that methodology. Uh, the Australian made The Forgotten City is also jumping on both platforms. Um, it started out initially as a, as a mod for um, uh, Skyrim, but it, you know, spun up to a full release. Now, if you do have the deluxe tier, that is the, you know, the, the highest tier, the one that costs the most money, uh, you know, on a monthly or a yearly basis, um, you get The Legend of Dragoon for PlayStation 1, Wild Arms 2 for PlayStation 1, Harvest Moon Back to Nature for PlayStation 1, and then Randomly Destroy All Humans for the PlayStation 4. Um, so this is the PS4 remake of the PS2 version, and I think that's why it's in here. Um, you know, so they, that released a number of years ago, but Harvest Moon is there. Um, you know, that's that's very old school Harvest Moon. So you know, it, it's going to be missing a lot of the the features that most people will come to associate with a modern day moon, uh, Harvest Moon game. Um, but yeah, it's it's done by the same folks that did Story of Seasons or that are working on that now. So it's definitely uh, going to be familiar to many players. As I said, those titles though, um, you know, the big one obviously is Horizon. And uh, it sort of made a lot of people happy when that was announced because, you know, Xbox go, cool, here's Halo day one, here's Forza day one, right? Um, Starfield coming this year hits Game Pass day on, right? So it's part of the subscriptions, part of that, that value add. Um, whereas when PlayStation announced this, you know, they didn't really drop any big first party titles on it, right? And they could have done that. They could have had said, hey, here's the Uncharted games, right? Enjoy them. Um, you know, could have just been the PS4 versions and that and called it a day, but you know, they haven't done that. Um, I do believe the first Horizon game is included. Uh, I'd have to double check that, but if it is, then, you know, we have uh, everything available there for Horizon, you know, soon as part of the service. Um, 
you know, the Borderlands 3 being there, that's great because that game has a lot of content to enjoy. Uh, so it's just, it's just fun to see all that sort of stuff come together in that way. Uh, obviously, you know, if you do have a PlayStation 5, you will want to make sure you're playing on the best screen you can. And Samsung are set to make that easier with the announcement that the Odyssey OLED G8 display is coming to Australia next month. I didn't plan to segue that way, it just sort of worked out that way. So there wasn't a plug for the monitor, that's just, you know, in terms of the story timeline, that's the way it turned out. Uh, but yeah, so the Odyssey OLED G8 is a quantum dot OLED display. Quantum dots uh, are a new type of um, OLED, so an organic light emitting diode, um, but they don't have any backlighting. So a traditional, uh, you know, LCD or LED panel not LCD, an LED panel and some earlier OLED panels will have an additional backlighting panel to provide illumination to help project the colors out from the, 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 you know, the screen. Um, the quantum dots do not have that. So generally speaking, a, a standard LED display panel will have, you know, seven or eight layers. The quantum dot has three. So it's much, much, much less technology uh, to go in it because, you know, there's, you know, less layers, uh, but it's definitely something to there. Now, the big thing with this one is it is an ultra wide display. So it runs, you know, like 34 inches on the angle from side to side. Um, these displays are not tall generally. They're more wider than tall uh, and it is slightly curved. We do have a, you know, an overhead picture here. So you can see that, you know, it has a nice curve to it. So it would work very well as a central display uh, for us, for your, you know, gaming setup if you wanted it for that. Um, and then you can have an additional monitor off to the side uh, for other things. Uh, it does have uh, some, some you know, uh, USB Type-C Thunderbolt ports on the back. Um, I don't believe it has, a, has, has one HDMI 2.1 port, which is what you would need for PlayStation 5 connectivity. Um, it did put something in there as well. Uh, yeah, so it is, uh, has a VESA display mount, so you can mount it on an arm if you need to. Uh, and it is HDR402 Black certified, meaning that the colors are going to be the best you can possibly get. The problem is with this uh, display and all the fe features and tech, uh, the recommended retail price for this is $1,999.95. Um, it is an expensive display. Uh, Samsung displays are by default very, very expensive, uh, regardless if you're talking, you know, TVs, laptops, um, or, you know, desktop displays, they're always very expensive to buy. Uh, but that is because, you know, they make some of the best displays around. Um, obviously, you know, Samsung phones have great displays uh, and that is something that, you know, they will be, you know, very proud of. Um, the fact that, you know, they also make displays for the iPhone. So there's a fair chance that, you know, if you have an iPhone, the display you're using was made by Samsung. Um, that is how good their tech is that Apple used their screens in their phone, right? So. Uh, obviously, there's non-compete clauses, so you know if Apple say, "Hey, we've got this new uh, design for a screen. This is what we think it's going to do. We need you to build, you know, 10 million of them." Uh, Samsung cannot take any of that information to apply it to their own screens. Um, I suspect at some point they still do, but that is generally not what happened. Is not what happens. Um, so yeah, so with all that, they know screens very, very well. So even though this is a $2,000 display, you're going to be getting, you know. I hate, to, I hate to use the word, but a premium picture quality, right? Um, I have an ultra wide now. Uh, I bought it, you know, four or five weeks ago from Prism. Uh, it does everything that I need it to do. Um, but, you know, it, it suffers a little bit with some uh, games with some color depth. By default, out of the box, I had to tweak the settings and that. Uh, with the, the quantum dot screens, you won't have to do that. So I did review an Alienware screen last year. Uh, and that did not have any issues with those sort of settings. Um, and again, because they're quantum, they also use a lot less power than a traditional OLED display. Uh, and of course, they use less power than LED displays. So um, quantum dot displays are better for you in terms of visual image that you're getting. And they're also better for the environment because they use less power and less materials to manufacture. So winning all around for everyone with those displays. Uh, moving away from some hardware, we're going to jump back into the world of games with the reveal that Venom will soon be coming to Midnight Suns. Obviously, that is a bit of a, a bit of a misleading statement. Venom is already in Midnight Suns, uh, but as part of the season pass content, Venom will be joining the ranks of the playable characters. 
So for those of you who have not played Midnight Suns, Venom is one of the um, corrupted uh, villains that uh, you know you have to fight against a few times throughout the game. It's very very cool. Some of the the, the final fight where you sort of take him down eventually uh, is was you know a very rewarding one. But the big thing with this is that um, when he joins this, he's joining for redemption. Um, so the actual trailer they released is actually called Redemption. The storyline is called Redemption um, because you know we know Venom to be you know. When, when he sort of merged with Eddie Brock, he became not just Venom Venom, you know, that we've sort of seen over the years in the various movies and, and TV shows and all that. Um, but he ended up becoming more what we, we know as Agent Venom, right? So he's not really a bad guy, but he's not, you know, Captain America, you know, clean cut good guy. So he still does sort of some bad things, but, you know, for very good reasons. So he's sort of, you know, the anti-hero. He'll still, he's like Deadpool, right? So with this, um, you know, uh, storyline addition, um, Venom will be playable, so you'll be able to add him to your party when you go out on missions. The other thing too is that, you know, it'll add three new story missions, add new features to the Abbey and all the bits and pieces that we got, same with Deadpool. Um, but yeah, it's, again, it's a story of redemption. Uh, you know, they've said three missions. How big those missions are, we don't yet know. Um, the actual release date for it is uh, the 23rd. 23rd? Yeah, 23rd of February, so nah, uh, next week will be available for him then. Um, Venom is a part of the season pass, so if you already own that and have access to Deadpool, uh, when Venom goes live, you'll gain access to that as well. The game is, of course, available on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S now. Uh, it launched uh, December 2nd last year for those platforms. It is still in development for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch release. Um, there is no date on when those will be happening yet, uh, but there's a fair chance that by the time all the DLC, the four waves, have been released, that the uh, other console versions will be available as well. The last sort of news story we're going to go through for the week, I said it's very, very quiet comparatively, uh, is that Tetris Effect is getting a massive uh, bunch of content delivered next week. So Tetris Effect is the Tetris game that is connected directly to um the uh you know music that you know you're hearing so as you play it impacts the music impacts the visuals behind the display um next week the playstation 5 uh a, a release is happening so the game is getting upgraded for, you know on playstation 5 um currently you can play the ps4 version on it but the ps5 version will you know take full advantage of the console um, it'll also get a ps psvr2 uh release next week um, so if you already own the game there, you'll get it as, as well if you have the hardware. That is exclusive, for, obviously, for PlayStation 5 owners and PSVR 2 owners. But all platforms next week are getting uh, new content modes. So um, there is a nice video here that's been released by the company uh, that has uh, you know a streamer who, who plays the game quite you know regularly go through and explain everything in significant detail. Uh, but there's a bunch of new modes coming to the game. So we have Zone Marathon, Single Player Classic, uh, Score Attack, which is what you can see here on the screen. It looks like the NES version from way back in the day. Uh, endless Master Mode and Endless Purifier Effects Mode. So there are a whole bunch of new modes um, just to give you more to play. And those are going to all versions. So the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Series X and S and Switch versions are getting it. Uh, Switch owners will also get uh, the Tate Mode support. Um, now, if you're not aware of what tape mode is, tape mode is literally where you uh, rotate your, your switch display 90 degrees. So instead of it being you know this way, it's now this way. Um, that is where the flip grip comes in handy. It's one of those accessories that people have made uh, to support that. You literally slide your switch in and then the Joy-Cons go in on either side. Um, you don't need that to play in tape mode. You just need a way of holding the switch screen up uh, if you're doing that. Uh, that replicates sort of what you used to see in the arcades with, you know, the sort of the, the shmups where the, the screen is taller rather than wider. So it's very much like your phone screen is, is a tape mode display uh, as opposed to your TV, which is a traditional, uh, you know, display in terms of orientation, right? Um, so yeah, so that is coming next week on the 22nd, the same day that the, uh, the PlayStation VR 2 and PlayStation 5 versions launch. Um, but yeah, uh, and again, it is a free upgrade, free upgrade, free update to the to the game, so you don't have to worry about anything there. That will bring us to the games that are releasing next week, and it is going to be a big one. Next week, we'll see over a dozen titles release 
a dozen major titles release over uh, the week. Uh, and when I say that, you know, there's a lot happening, I mean there's a lot. It's not just, you know, one or two here or there. Most days have three or so games coming out on them, right? Um, so there's nothing on, on the Monday. Again, there's nothing coming out this weekend, you know, apart from maybe some random indie shadow drop sort of thing happening. Uh, but starting on the 21st, which is next Tuesday, let me just double check that to make sure. Yes. So by the time this is up on YouTube, uh, it'll be the day after that. Uh, Tuesday, the 21st of February, we'll see Atomic Heart release for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, it is also launching into Xbox Game Pass on the same day. Uh, we have uh, the code now. We're playing it for review. We'll have the review up uh, hopefully by the time the embargo lifts. Uh, also, the same day, we will see the release of Like a Dragon Ishin for the same platforms. So PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Um, this is the first game in the formerly Yakuza series. Uh, adopting the full Japanese title in the West. So in the past, it was, you know, like a dragon one, like a dragon two, like a dragon three in Japan. And when they got ported to the West, they were given the name of Yakuza. Going forward, they'll all be called Yakuza. So the last one that released was Yakuza like a dragon, um, which is sort of their way of merging the two titles. Uh, you know, so going forward, it'll just be like a dragon. There is a demo for that available now. Uh, so you can give it a try if you want to. Uh, finally, on the 21st, we'll see the release of Seven Doors uh, from uh, indie developer or indie, indie publisher, so Desco, uh, and that is coming to all consoles, so PlayStation, Switch, and Xbox. The next day, the 22nd of February, we'll see the release of Digimon World Next Order for both PC and Switch. This game has already been released on PlayStation. This is just a new version of it coming to additional platforms. Um, there are, you know, expectations that a lot of the, the bugs in that will have been fixed uh, as part of the boarding process. So hopefully that is done well for the Digimon fans. Uh, we'll also see the release of PlayStation VR 2 next week. That, of course, means that we'll see Horizon Call of the Mountain release. Um, you know, as I said, we'll see um, Hello Neighbor 2, will, will, the VR version will release that day. Um, there is a lot dropping on that day, um, in, including uh, uh, Kizuna AI Touch the Beat. It's a rhythm game. Um, the, the game is coming to other platforms like Switch and PlayStation 4 in April, um, but it's coming to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR 2 uh, that day, a sort of a launch thing. The 23rd, so this is now the Thursday, right? So, you know, we've, we've only done two days and we already have, you know, six major launches. So on the Thursday next week, we'll see the release of Blood Bowl 3 for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, it's the latest title in the, it's not Dungeons and Dragons, but it's like that mythological sort of world um, where they're using, you know, it's sort of tactical football. The 23rd, we'll also see the release of Company of Heroes 3 for PC from Relic and Sega. Um, that is, you know, the next entry in the popular Company of Heroes strategy series. Grim Guardians Demon Purge will also release next week from Intercreates uh, for both uh, for sorry for PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. It's an all platforms release. Um, that Intercreates is the developer that did the Azure Striker series. They also did the sort of the demakes of the the, the Blood Moon, so the, you know the old eight bit looking Blood Moon games. That was them as well. Then finally on the twenty fourth, which is next Friday. Um, Clive and Wrench will release for PC, Switch, and PlayStation. Um, that is a, you know, Banjo Kazooie esque style platformer. Um, it looks, you know, pretty charming. Um, looks very, very simple, like gameplay wise. Um, so it should scratch that sort of platforming itch if you're one of those uh, fans that enjoys that series, uh, that, that genre, sorry. Uh, we'll also see the release of Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe for Switch. Uh, that is, of course, you know, the Wii game that released many, many years ago. And they're now porting it and fixing up the visuals. Uh, they're also adding a new epilogue. So once you complete the main story, you'll be able to pick up that and play through an entire new story. Then finally, Octopath Traveler 2 will release next week for PC, PlayStation, and Switch. This is a big thing. Obviously, the first game released as a Switch exclusive. Uh, Nintendo even went so far as to publish it outside of Japan. Uh, then it eventually started getting ported to other platforms because... That's what happens with Square Enix. Uh, Square Enix and Capcom do that. They'll announce things as exclusive for, for Nintendo platforms and then they port it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, so that is obviously what is coming out uh, next week. As I said, it's a big week. You know, on every day, there are like three major titles. 22nd, of course, has the PlayStation VR 2 and it's, you know, dozen launch games. Um, so that's all to be enjoyed then. 
the week after being there's only a few days left in march um you know dungeons of athia is coming out scars above from prime matter which is owned by uh, play on which is owned by embracer that will finally see release uh and depending on where you are in the world uh destiny 2 lightfall will release you know next tuesday but it'll also release on the march 1st depending on where you are but here in australia it will be march 1st for other parts of the world it'll be the 28th so just be aware of that one uh with that all said and done it does bring us to the end of the show as i said it is a very quiet week this week there hasn't been a lot of uh, news going on just because it is that time that you know that sort of cycle of you know whenever there's a big showcase event uh like a direct you know things do slow down i said there was uh, we saw the same thing happen with the xbox developer direct back in january the, the week after that was fairly quiet as well so if playstation are hosting a state of play in march like they have done uh you know the last sort of two years we may see the same thing happen then uh, but we have to wait and see if that actually is the case going forward again we'll be back on uh, tuesday for more of our splinter cell series we'll be back on friday for the next episode of the max kick show going through whatever the news of the week happens to be uh, and this sunday will be our first uh, ssx series stream where we're just going to play through some ps2 ssx um, there's no set you know schedule for that it'll sort of be every fortnight or so um, but yeah do follow us along on the socials if you want to see it when we go live for that otherwise this is we'll be back on tuesday for the uh, more splinter cell and until we see you online next time, happy gaming.